Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you guys how to make an Android box working with a USB touchscreen monitor. The first thing we need to do is go to the link www.phoenixos.com. Once you're in the home page, we'll be covering to the download, then click on Phoenix OS. And before we get to the downloads page, I'll be talking about the hardware requirements. Most likely though, you'll need an Intel Core processor and an um, Intel graphics card to work on a PC. I am not sure about the integrated ones such as AMD or VIA. Now the reason I mentioned this to you is because I have seen a lot of people running the graphics card trying to boot up Phoenix OS and they were getting a command line instead of showing a Phoenix OS introduction. I had this problem too as well until I figured out that I need to have an integrated graphics card to get it working. So it seems right now unfortunately that the most of the dedicated graphics card don't will not support Phoenix OS for now until the team patches it in the future. But however, I've seen some reported that they got it working, but it has to be a specific graphics card device and right now we'll be going to the download page so make sure to click on this if you have a PC so right now though I have a Intel core processor and it's custom built and it's running on Windows 10 and I'll be right and right now since we all got system requirements wrapped up we'll be going to the download page so Make sure to click on this if you have a PC. Okay, so now you have three options to download. You can download the whole installer, or if you have a 32-bit processor, then you could you download it off this section. I haven't used this one before, so I can't comment on that. So right now, I'll be clicking on this link because I'm using Windows 10. I already have it downloaded. I'll be showing you what the file looks like which is called Phoenix OS installer now I'll be right go right click on that and go to run as administrator it is highly recommended to do so speak so that you won't run into problems in the future so this it's a much safer way to do this so we click on that and let it run for a while Okay, we are now on the f installer. You can use, you can install either on the hard disk or you can install it on a flash drive. I'll be choosing a hard disk as for the demonstration. Okay, you now, you now have choices on which hard disk you want to install. I'll be choosing the D hard drive, though. You can choose any of the hard disk drive you want to install. Don't worry too much about do you need to partition this or do I need to format that though. It's not going to really hurt anything. So we're going to click next. Then you can choose data size you want to you want to install for the for the Android. I'll be choosing 4 GB for now though as for demonstration. So after you choose a data size I'm going to be clicking install. So now we'll be letting it run for a while though it may take it will be taking about two to five minutes depending on how good your machine is. Okay so now it's installed we'll, I'll be clicking on reboot now and I'll be showing you how the setup works. My PC BIOS is set to UEFI mode so it's gonna boot to the Windows loader first. However, yours might be different. It could be that if you have a legacy boot, it's going to probably go to the grub loader instead. But both are doing the same process. Now, if it's the first time to install and first time to boot up, it's going to take some time to get it the the Phoenix OS to optimize. Though so, but the next time we reboot, it's going to be much faster. Okay, now that it's loaded, to get the touchscreen working, all you have to do is plug and play with the USB. 
But if that doesn't work, just restart the computer would be the best option. So there you have it. You have the Phoenix OS installed and the touchscreen seems working fine for my monitor. However, let me give you some warnings about the Phoenix OS based on my experience. It is buggy. The Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi, and the audio don't seem to work, so I had to use external devices in order to get them working. But sometimes yours might be different than mine, depending on which hardware you have. It might be some one of them works and one of them not, though. So it's just just the way the computers are. I hope that helps. And if you have any questions, just post some comments, I'll, I'll do my best to help. Thank you everyone.